So, you've realized your fuel management system may have some weak links? That is an awesome start. Now let's fix those issues. Hello everyone, I am your SM2 Superfan and in a previous video we went over some of the challenges you'll most likely face when implementing a fuel management system. It is a very useful heads up so do check it out, but those challenges generally fall under three categories. The first one is operational friction. This is where users will just resist the extra steps and uh, procedures that they have to go through in order to get fuel. So what you potentially get there is inaccurate, unreliable, or just missing data. The second type of challenges is uh, users trying to cheat the system. So that's typically done by trying to exploit a system's blind spots to pump fuel into uh, something other than what's been authenticated at the terminal. So what you get there potentially is fraud. And the third type of challenge is just the multiple tank ports that can be found on some industrial class equipment. Uh, so that makes it very easy for a distracted worker to pump the wrong product into a tank port. And that can lead to really devastating and expensive consequences. Now, these weak links are way too disruptive to just go unaddressed, but luckily there's a very effective way to solve those potential problems. The best way to address these issues is to have the system automatically authenticate the vehicle at the pump and to only unlock that pump once the nozzle is physically inserted into the fill pipe. Once the nozzle is removed, then the flow is interrupted, keeping everybody honest and limiting spills to boot. This kind of uh, automated mode is usually achieved uh, by having an RFID reader and an RFID tag working together. One is on the nozzle and the other one is on the vehicle. And then when they come in close enough proximity, then they kind of recognize each other and uh, the pump is unlocked. So in this kind of setup, the user, all they have to do is just drive up to the pump, grab the nozzle, put it into the fill pipe, the RFID components uh, get close enough to each other, the pump is unlocked, and uh, once they're done filling up, the user just uh, puts the nozzle back, the transaction is closed, and they can just drive away. You can see how this resolves all three types of issues that we mentioned before. There is no operational friction anymore because there's no extra steps that the user has to go through. Fraud is eliminated because there's no way for the user to remove the nozzle from the fill pipe to try to fill up a jerry can or some other vehicle because as soon as the RFID components are far away from each other, the transaction is closed and the pump is locked. And there is no chance to pour the wrong product into a tank port because the system will only unlock the pump if the product is compatible with the identified tank. But here's the thing, in describing this RFID reader and tag setup, we haven't said yet which uh, of the two is on the nozzle and which one is on the vehicle. And it turns out that this design decision really matters a lot. Now, obviously uh, RFID readers are way more expensive than the RFID tags. And in all cases, there are way more vehicles than there are pumps. So it makes sense for the least expensive component, the RFID tag, to go on the vehicles and for the RFID reader to go on the nozzle. And the RFID tags have a virtually infinite lifespan and uh, they're passive, so they don't need any kind of um, a battery or power source of any kind. And mounting an RFID reader on the nozzle doesn't really seem to pose any kind of problem either because uh, yes, the reader is active, but uh, the pump itself uh, requires a power source, so they could just use the same one and uh, there you go. However, our experience in the real world has shown that the opposite design decision is actually what makes the most sense. Although on paper it makes sense to put the active uh, RFID reader on the nozzle, uh, it actually causes a lot of problems when we are talking about uh, private fueling facilities and especially those uh, that operate in harsh environments. Now here's one thing to keep in mind and it's actually pretty important. If the tag on a vehicle fails uh, or goes missing or whatever, uh, then only one vehicle is unable to fuel. If something goes wrong with the active RFID reader on a nozzle, nobody can fuel. Let's now go over some of the issues of installing uh, active gear on a nozzle. 
First of all, if we're talking about an active reader uh, that requires a wire uh, to tap into uh, the electricity it needs, then uh, we're talking about uh, special wirings and uh, fittings. Uh, it needs to accommodate uh, all dispenser makes and models. And first of all, that's, that's not always the case. Uh, and secondly, uh, it's rarely available off the shelf from whoever you're buying it. So uh, this tends to increase the price quite a bit. Also, mechanical type um, industrial dispensers tend to run on AC, uh, which needs to be converted to clean DC in order uh, for the nozzle tag to work. So that, uh, once again, uh, raises the price even more. And then this whole setup has to meet intrinsic safety regulations, and that just increases the cost a few more notches still. Now, I can almost hear you say, what about battery-powered nozzle tags? Well, they have their own set of issues. First of all, batteries need frequent uh, recharging and replacing, and that's not really ideal or even feasible in the context of fleet fueling operations, and that's made even worse uh, when we're talking about extreme colds or heat. Also, intrinsically safe designs um, involve uh, potted modules, and that makes them impossible to maintain or repair uh, in case they become defective or they get damaged. And one more thing, if you have sites that are remote, uh, sites that are far away, then you would need to stock up uh, on those active nozzle tags uh, because they are battery powered and, you know, just by that virtue, they have a limited shelf life. So uh, you really need to stock up uh, on nozzle tags and that's not really an attractive option. And think about this, as the battery in an active nozzle tag starts to deteriorate, you'll encounter more and more uh, that whole phenomenon of uh, now it works, now it doesn't, now it works again. And as frustrating as that is when it happens to your TV remote, just imagine how much more disruptive it'll be uh, at a remote site where workers just uh, want to fuel up and go on with their work day on a really hot or a really cold day. Active gear is just more prone to failure. Uh, powered components, more components, added complexity uh, just makes it that there are more points of potential failure. In the decades that we've been in fuel management, we've seen places where uh, nozzles have been used to uh, break the ice uh, around a fill pipe. Uh, we've seen uh, uh, nozzles dropped, uh, we've seen them uh, driven over. So. When you have expensive active nozzle tags, uh, all of that stuff, plus the previous issues that uh, we just mentioned, tend to kind of pile up to make active nozzle tags just a very unattractive, impractical option. When it comes to this type of fully automated fuel management systems, businesses will often have the reflex to ask, can we afford this? And although it's understandable, uh, one thing to keep in mind is that given the costs associated with uh, fraud and operational friction and equipment breakdowns, the question really becomes, can you afford not to? That'll be it for now. Uh, check us out over at coincorp.com where we publish content on the subject of fleet management. Thanks for watching and until next time, keep it efficient.